well esteemed judges, brothers and sister jurists, and brothers and sisters in Christ. This is a Mass in honor of St. Thomas More, and we are here today to thank God for the gift of those who are involved in your profession and to especially express our gratitude to you for really being servants of the elucidation of truth and the pursuit of justice. And all of us know this is no easy task, especially today, when many cultural forces mitigate against telling the truth and cover over true justice in the name of fairness, feelings, sentimentality, whatever the currency of the day is. And so we applaud you and ask for the grace of courage in doing your commitment and your ministry, really, to truth and justice, and we ask the Holy Spirit to accompany you in a very powerful and abundant way. As you may know, I served for eight and a half years as the bishop in Wyoming. And very often, <clears throat> you would hear this phrase, cowboy up. I remember one time I was struggling with some issue, and I don't even remember what it is, and I stopped on one of those cold, blowy, wintry days at this gas station in the middle of nowhere, and I went in to pay for my gas, and I looked back, and there was this room. I heard a pool table uh, kinds of sounds, and went back there, and there was a bunch of gnarly looking cowboys back there with long handlebar mustaches and I thought it was stepping back into the 1950s or 60s. And I'll never forget what one of the cowboys said to me because he was aware of whatever this battle was we were fighting and I don't really remember what the, what the topic was even. But he said as we were saying goodbye, Bishop remember, cowboy up. In other words, be courageous. Do the right thing for the right reason. And let the chips fall where they may after making a courageous choice. Cardinal George was here just a few days ago and <clears throat> gave a wonderful homily at the Knights of the Holy Sepulchre gathering that we had here at our cathedral. And he said that we in this part of the country in many ways are blinded by our blessings. We are riding on the shoulders of those who have gone before us in faith and in culture, taking for granted all of their sacrifices and not seeing how rich a price has been paid that we may sit on our laurels today with our apathy and our lack of commitment and our faint-hearted courage. So we all have to take a long, loving look at the real that's happening to our culture and our church and not be blinded by the blessings, not be anesthetized by the riches of the legacy of we have received, but be fully aware and engaged with the threats that surround us. I remember also after two years of service as the Bishop of Wyoming that I had to make a choice. The choice was this, <clears throat> to give in to prophets of gloom and doom and to look at everything that was wrong and to focus on that and to curse the darkness. There were many voices and there still are those who curse the darkness. I made a decision I wasn't going to curse the darkness anymore. There were, it was time to light a candle. And when I told the Lord in prayer, Lord, give me candles to light that I may lead people to your truth and do so as your servant. Shortly after that, the opportunity came to begin a Catholic college. And through miracle after miracle, Wyoming 
Catholic College is serving many students and leading them to truth and dynamic faith. Shortly after that, a prayer that I had <coughs> made to our Lord to provide prayer support for the mission of the church in Wyoming by asking for Carmelite sisters, that prayer was answered, that prayer of asking to be able to light candles. When a monk, a Carmelite monk in full habit, showed up at my front door at the rectory in Casper. And he began, began with my assistance, the monks of Mount Carmel of Wyoming, who grew from two the first year to 18 today, and who are building a new monastery. So when you say to the Lord, help me to light candles, he will hear your prayer and get ready for the answer. Because it will cost, but it will be far better than cursing the darkness. In the gospel we heard today, I have come to set a fire on the earth. That's what Jesus said. You think I've come for unity and well-being and harmony and all those good things, but I've come for division. Today our culture is hell-bent on destroying itself. We are proverbial, prover, prover, proverbially taking in and becoming addicted to too much candy, physical candy, government candy, addiction to power, prestige, and pleasure, comfort at all costs, depending upon government handouts. We are becoming a very entitled culture instead of a culture of hard work and dedication to the common good. And oddly enough, this is all happening when there's a huge cultural push to push God out of the equation. We can do it alone. We are self-sufficient. We are bright. We are eager. We love to create our own future. And oddly enough, the more God gets pushed out, the more societal problems we have, the more murders by young people almost daily now, the more we become hateful of one another, the more division arises, not because of good causes of following the Lord, but because I want to have my way at all costs, no matter the cost. In your profession, my brothers and sisters, <clears throat> you have to find that way of lighting a candle often in very dark situations, when people who were once friends or family members turn on one another, when groups who used to work together become enemies instead of colleagues, when all of a sudden mission becomes muddled with mediocrity, and when people lose their way, I would ask you, make sure you ask the Holy Spirit to light a candle so you can elucidate the truth and point out the way to justice. Just imagine if all of us ask the dear Lord to light candles for us in our life, in our work, in our professions. If you put all of those candles together, very soon, there will be a fire upon the earth. Let it not be said that our generation was so smug, lackadaisical, self-satisfied, that we merely either endured the darkness or we cursed the darkness. Let's know the enemy. Let's elucidate the truth. And let's put our candles together 
that Jesus may light a fire on the earth. May Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.